Morning folks, it's 20 to 10 in the morning on the 21st of November 2013. Uh, the moon's in Cancer as I speak, and as I speak, it's opposite Pluto, opposite Venus, square Uranus. And do you know what? I've been talking about stuff like this for weeks, about how heavy and intense and extreme these times are. And part of it's down to me, because it's going on in my chart. So of course there's going to be some transference help. But at the same time, I'm bored. I'm bored of it, so I want to lighten up. And I've been trying to think, okay, how can I bring some humour into my vlogs for a few days? And I'm not feeling particularly like light-hearted, spontaneous. You're not going to get what sun, what cars does each sun sign of a zodiac drive? Not at the moment. Give me a couple of months and maybe. But then I was just looking at this morning's chart and I thought, where's Icarus? And I suddenly thought, minor asteroids. How, how long has it been since I've done anything on the minor asteroids? So I'm going to do a two-parter, I think. I'll do one bit today, and I'll do the second bit over the next few days, uh, probably tomorrow, unless something comes up first. So I'm not going to get into how they work. I have enough trouble working out how the invisible planets like, Ju uh, like Uranus, Neptune, and Pluto were, let alone the asteroids. So I'm not even going to get into the science or, or the, the reasons why these little lumps of rock sort of 80 miles or 100 miles across have such a profound effect upon us. But this is pure speculation. The only written material I know on the asteroids that's any good is quite old now. It's 20 years old by Demetra George. Um, and that's where I got some of my stuff from. But I've extrapolated it and I found over the years that every so often when I look at the asteroids in a person's chart, I do find specific asteroids with specific meanings that give rise to case-specific situations in their lives. I've only identified with some of the asteroids. I'm not an expert, but I'm probably about as good as you get. So here's a definitive list of some of the asteroids that I work with, and I'll try and give my own interpretation of them. Um, I'm not going to talk about Ceres or Pallas or Juno or Vesta. These are the four largest asteroids, and there is a body of work beginning to be formulated using them now. Maybe I'll mention on them. So, what asteroids do I use? Well, the first one that jumps out at me is Arachne. There is an asteroid called Arachne. And the crazy thing is, at the moment, the asteroid Arachne is at 11 degrees of Capricorn. The asteroids have about a two and a half to four and a half year orbit. Um, and I often find... Crazy though it may seem, that I often find Arachne with the sun or the moon in certain types of people who have an energy about them that can best be described as spider-like. This is not negative nor positive, but it's different. It's spider-like. And often, not always, but often I see this too in the type of people who have a kind of crunched in face or a crunched in body, often quite small and looking old before their time. I don't know why this should be, but Arachne is an energy that does create a kind of shrewdness. And when there is a very prominent Arachne in someone's chart, there will always be the kind of attitude in the person that, that spins and weaves uh, their future ahead of them, so that when they move into it, they're moving into prepared ground. What else do I work with? Bacchus. Yeah, okay, Bacchus. Rare do I use this. All of these minor asteroids, I will only give them an orb of absolute maximum one degree. Normally half a degree. Bacchus, it does what it says on the tin. You find Bacchus could judge someone's sun or their Jupiter or their Venus, they're going to like, especially for during for a decade or so in their life, they're going to like the alcohol, particularly the grape. Ceres we know about. It's nurturing, it's cereals, it's grains, it's the mother. Diana, the huntress. When I see this in a male chart, I often find that the individual feels persecuted in some area of their life, some specific area that does not generate through into the larger pattern, but just into the specific area. When I see this in a woman's chart, there is a side of them, whether it is repressed or expressed, that does relate to the archetypal image of imagery, the Greek imagery of Diana riding on the horseback, firing arrows. And um, there is something of the huntress or the hunter about this aspect, or the hunted. 
about this asteroid. Eros. Eros does what it says on the tin also. Eros is what turns you on. My Eros is conjunct Mercury in Jupiter. I get turned on by words uh, and, and intellect. Other people get turned on by different things. Wherever Eros and the aspects it makes in your chart is, is basically what turns you on. Uh, where should we go now? Let's come down. Let's just do one more today, I think. Let's do Icarus. Icarus is, the story of Icarus is he flew too close to the sun, the son of Daedalus. And of course his wings melted, so he fell to earth. And Icarus is common in the charts of those people. When you find Icarus conjunct sun or moon or ascendant or Mars particularly, then there is the capacity to, stay, to take stupid risks and to crash and burn spectacularly. Somehow to bounce. God knows how. Don't ask me how these asteroids work. Don't ask me how they got their names and how, once they got their names, the transference of that myth and legend permeated into individual human lives. Somehow it did. I'll do the second half of the asteroids, including Urania and Terpsichor and Lilith and Psyche and, 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 and Pandora in the next day or so. All right, catch you later. Today's a good day. The moon's in Cancer and it's past Uranus and Pluto. Time to indulge today, the moon's conjunct Jupiter. Have a fun day. Bye now.